Obviously, we took Johnny Davis in the 10th pick. Very excited about that. I think he's going to be a tremendous fit for our, what we're trying to do here. We continue to add talent, two-way player, excellent scorer. I think he's got uncapped potential. Uh, we're going to bring Wes in here next, and you can ask him how the hell he's going to get him there quick, right? But we're excited for him. And with that, I will take questions. Tell me where you see Johnny's greatest area potential that we're most excited about. I think for our team to be able to, to get to that next level, it's just adding depth and, and what he's able to do with his command basketball out on the floor. He understands the game very well. He's a quick learner. Uh, very across, we couldn't find a coach who couldn't compliment him enough about his basketball IQ, his character, and certainly his athleticism. I think he's an underrated passer. I'm going to continue to say he's a great passer. He didn't pass a whole lot in college, so I'm trying to encourage him subliminally to pass a little bit more. But I think he's going to be able to score different levels. I think he's excellent. Uh, he's a great teammate. And that really resonated. I mean, we really talked to a lot of people as we do. I resonated uh, quite a bit on him as well. But the talent is there, and that's what we're excited about. With the tenth pick, I think that's somebody we could add to this team is going to be a, a very big contributor pretty quick. A lot has been written about his competitiveness. Also, did you guys see that either in the workout or did oh, yeah. that kind of show up for you? Uh, the stories that you hear, just him and his twin brother growing up and the competitions that they would have. Spent a lot of time downloading with a lot of different coaches that would tell us about this kid and, and his ability to go out and take somebody else off the, right off the, off the, uh, off the court in terms of his defense. If you challenge him, he's going to come at you. He's going to come at you hard. Uh, really excited when we watched the, his workout here. I think he was somebody that, uh, he appreciated what we were trying to do. He knew we were trying to kick his butt. He kept fought through it. I think our coaches were impressed with him and his ability to compete that day, certainly. But it's all about the video, the, the resume that he put into that point. I think everybody gets excited when they see him step up to the plate. You look at some of the games, the battles he had with Purdue, for instance. Um, I think it resonates quite a bit that he's a competitor. He's got a, a champion's heart, so we're excited for that. Tommy, how fast do you see him developing in the NBA? You know, I think it's it's everybody has to run their own race. But I, I think he came to us, the lottery, he entered the draft, and I think he had a pretty good idea that he was ready for the NBA. You're never ready till the ball goes up and you get out there and someone tells you you have to switch out on you know, some of the top players in the league, certainly. But I, I think his game will translate pretty quickly. Tommy, how do you evaluate him as a defender? You know, that's a work in progress for sure. I, I think we're going to ask him to be one of those guys who can certainly pull some people down. But I, I think that the, the raw material is certainly there. I know the demand will be from day one. That's what we're going to look for. But that we wouldn't have taken him if we had confidence he could be an excellent defender. He averaged eight rebounds a game last year. How do you project that for a guard? That's, uh, you know, we talk about things that really are high twitch for us. That's something that was very interesting to us. Just the numbers, you knew that. So we're excited about that for sure. The last uh, question I did. In the era of positionless basketball, what would you say he would play if he had a game tonight? If we had a game tonight, he could go between the one and the two pretty easily. I have great confidence in our backcourt. Bradley can handle the ball both positions seamlessly. Yeah, the idea for us, and I think Wes will build on this to your question, ask him of that. Is that we're going to try to have three ball handlers out there. We're going to try to really keep it wide open. When you've got KP and Bradley, capable scorers, and put Cruz out there, Pope out there. Now you've got Johnny, you know, the guy who can fill it up a little bit. I, I think it's exciting to do that. And the fact that he's a good rebounder kind of augments uh, some of the other things that we expect from him. So we're excited. Hey, it's on um, draft night. Everybody's undefeated. Everybody's excited. I genuinely are. I, we genuinely are. And um, can't wait to welcome him here, but let's get to work. You know, that's the thing. We, the rest of the night we're going to be working. We're not giving, you know, you know, the 54, there's a lot of different opportunities. We're looking at that as well. So I'm not trying to cheesily excuse myself, but I gotta go back to work. But I really, we are very grateful for him being there. What said that about Johnny saying to you? Well, you know, uh, first off about the kid, uh, obviously high character, uh, has a very mature nature, uh, but you can tell he's got a passion and very competitive spirit about him. Uh, I think he just loves the game, loves to play. And uh, you see that out on the floor. You know, he, he guards, obviously the scoring, he scored all three levels, but he embraces that side of the ball, which is very important for us. And Tommy was saying that you could probably play either the one or the two. 
where you kind of see his primary fit? You know, I think, you know, we talk about positionless basketball. I think, you know, 2-1, I think 2-3. He'll match up some nights with bigger uh, wing players, but I don't want to put him in a box necessarily. I think he's a ball player. I think he's a, he's a depth and doing a lot of things on the floor. <laughs> uh, matching up with Therese, how, how do you see his wing defense and what he's capable of as a I, I don't want to you know, judge him quite yet because every young player is going to go through some bumps. The fact that he uh, embraces that side, I think it's an important piece. Give yourself a chance. Seems like a very cerebral player. A uh, guy who's going to do his homework and be disciplined you know, tactically in what we're trying to accomplish. Uh, but I think he'll, he'll pick it up quickly. You have those two intangibles. I think you really give yourself an opportunity to be elite in that area. How did you kind of see that the right there? How did you kind of find out that part about him? Uh, you know what? The uh, during the interview process, just kind of talking to him, but also taking him to the board. And, you know, have him walk me through different situations, different uh, defensive scenarios, and just see where he uh, where he felt comfortable. Um, he was able to draw plays and do some things on the, on the board which were, were impressive. I think also they do all the cognitive tests and those things came out you know, with, with, with raving reviews, but just the interaction you can tell. Very, uh, there are a lot of layers to this kid, which I like. They're very mature for a second year play. I think a lot of people would describe Brad the same way. How can you imagine them playing well? It's kind of easier to expect Brad with anybody yeah. that hasn't seen them playing like No, I think they will accompany each other. Both obviously three level scores. He, he'll learn to expand his range, you know, as uh, as he grows into this game. Uh, but both dynamic, I think, you know, they, they get to the rim. The mid range is kind of his calling card. But you see some of that in, in Brad's game. Uh, I think he's just going to get better and better. You know, ball handling, playmaking. Um, but the defensive side and the rebound, uh, the two keys that really uh, stuck stuck out to me. Yeah. What was that moment like in draft? Oh, it's exciting. I mean, these guys put in a ton of work. Um, when I say these guys, Tommy, his his staff, um, you know, the medical piece, the you know, analytics guys, they, they put in so much effort into the, you know just this moment. So you know, when it goes the way you, you, you foresee it to go, I think it's uh, rewarding. Um, and plus, you know, you're, you're adding another great young young man and uh, talented young man to this group. What kind of athlete is he? I think he's a good athlete. Yeah, I think he's a good athlete. Um, I think, um, you know, he'll, as the game slows down for him, um, I think he'll he'll find ways to create more separation. and You'll see what looks like more athleticism, but I think just the speed of it will be different at first. You know, you're playing the Big Ten, so you're used to playing a grinded out, very physical game. Um, so I don't think that's going to be an issue for him. I think he'll be able to take that step you know, pretty quickly. So, I know you were just asked about his uh, positionalist uh, chops, but could you envision him as a lead ball handler for extended uh, periods? I, I don't know yet, honestly. Um, I don't think he's been tasked to do that at this, at this point in his career. Um, uh, to say no, I think he'd be jumping the gun. Uh, but I think he, he could grow in that area for sure. What do you see in his jump from year one to year two scoring? You know, I think just the, the level of confidence, uh, not only you know, from him putting the time, but the confidence that the coaching staff and his teammates, you know, you know kind of breathe into his game. I think he took it and ran with it. And I think that just played to his strength. He had a great stretch of games at, for with, on the road, too. But then it looked like he got maybe a little dinged up and slowed down a little bit. What's the concern level about being able to stay healthy through an, an I guess some of those, rest? I think, were uh, happenstance. I don't know if you could ever worry about uh, your medical checked out. So I think those were just small bumps and bruises. Um, plus, you know, you start putting a string of games together that, you know, the way he did, you're going to be more and more the focus of the other team's you know, defensive energy. So you, know, you become, become more of a playmaker, a facilitator. Maybe takes you off the, uh, the 
scoreboard a bit, but mm -hmm. you still have to find ways to impact winning. Tommy just described him as a competitor with a champion's heart. Could you elaborate a little bit on the type of competitor you expect him to be? Well, you can tell. I mean, I think it's just, um, he talks about, you know, how he would compete with his, with his siblings. Um, you know, he, he showed us the court that it, his parents built uh, in their backyards. So you can tell that they're all about basketball. It's, it's, it's not just a, it's not a job for him. You know, it's something that he loves to do. It's, it's something that he's extremely passionate about. How important was the workouts that he had here in terms of the team getting to know him and getting a feel for, for him? Um, I think it's just a small piece, honestly. I mean, it's a big piece for me because I don't have uh, you know much exposure to the draft eligible uh, crop of kids until April and May. Yeah, that's, that's where you have to kind of lean in on the, the scouting department, you know, Tommy, Brett, uh, and those guys to kind of help fill the gaps. Um, his interview in Chicago w was terrific. Uh, and then obviously, workout and interview here, you know, it's just, you could really tell that you had something special. As a coach, and as you've talked to him, you said, and, and as you've seen him play, what's the process like in your mind, or have you thought of a process for him to take his game to the next level in the NBA? Well, I think you know, the first thing is to uh, you know, kind of keep your feet on the ground a bit, and you don't want to add layers to, to the kid's game quite yet. I think it's just do what you do, play to your strengths, uh, and then once you find a, you know, your niche, your role, now we can expand that you know, inch by inch, but I don't, I don't want to throw too much at him. Uh, I think he's, he's, he's very capable of impacting, you know, your rotation right now, just the way he is. Uh, so you know, I'm excited to see you know, how it plays out. And Coach, you kind of touched on it early, but it's intangible. But going through those, as you got to know him, what, what was it that was like, this is my guy, I just like what I hear from him? Well, you know, I think beyond the, the, the obvious, you know, the, the, the playing stats, um, you know, we talked about how passionate he is and, you know, about the game. Uh, you can tell that there's character. And, um, he seems like a very good kid, very uh, well read. Uh, but there's a level of toughness. You know, he's got a little bit of an edge. Um, and I think that's to have both of those things is important. What are maybe the one or two things that you're most excited to see once you guys get in here for rookie mini camp and summer league? Uh, I want to guard. <laughs> I know he can do it. I, I, I want to see how. Uh, you know, he attacks that side of the ball. Um, you know, he's going to be tasked with guarding elite level um, you know, offensive players. So, you know, I think it's uh, it's important to see where he is and how he does. It is really good. You know, I've, I've had some family that lived out in D.C. before, so I'm very familiar with the area. And um, highlighted your competitiveness. Where do you think that stems from? Uh, Maybe growing up with your brother and your parents, and where do you think you're competitive? Kind of it definitely comes from growing up with a twin brother. Uh, I mean, you know, I feel like you can only understand if you have a twin or a twin brother or twin sister, but it's just that competitiveness and wanting to be better than the other. Ava? Johnny, Tommy Shepard said uh, you appreciated what the team was trying to do here. Where do you see yourself in terms of fitting into what the Wizards are trying to accomplish, kind of? where they are um, just organizationally as a whole right now? Yeah, I think I fit in as, you know, a, a two-way player, especially on the defensive end. Um, you know, I keep saying it, but you can not you can never control if the ball goes in the hoop or not, but you can always control your effort and intensity on the defensive end. Wes Unsell Jr. said he was really excited talking to you, just kind of having you go to the board and draw plays. Um, what was that moment like for you, going up in front of him and, and kind of having to explain some things and, and show at, uh, in, in the moment's notice there in the interview? Yeah, um, no, nah, he, he said he was pretty impressed with the way I could draw, draw up plays and how fast I could do it. Um, I mean, you know, I don't know if they would ever actually work in a game, but they got the job done for him. Neil? Hey, Johnny. First off, welcome to DC. Congratulations. Thank you. Tommy Shepard said that, you know, he could see you playing either the one or the two. I guess, what is your familiarity, you know, if you were to play number of minutes at point guard? Uh, I mean, I, I played most of the three in college, actually, three, two, but I have no problem playing the one. Uh, I think I'm a, a capable enough ball handler to bring the ball up the floor and get the offense started. And Tommy Shepard has talked before about 
you know, within a college game, sometimes you're chucking up late in the shot clock threes, and that can sometimes sway averages. I guess, where do you feel like your shot is coming into the NBA now? Uh, definitely in the mid-range. That's, that's kind of been my bread and butter for, for a while now. But like you just said, the reason why my percentages weren't the way they weren't the way I wanted them to be was because I had the ball in my hands a lot of the time. And, you know, if it's end of shot clock situation, I have to make sure I get a shot up. Thanks, Johnny. Welcome again. Yep, thank you. Alex? Hey, Johnny, congratulations. You know, the, the Wizards said they were happy to have you there at 10. Kind of walk me through that moment when you saw that the Wizards uh, had, were going to be able to select you and when they actually did select you when you got the call. What did that mean to you? How excited were you to be chosen specifically by the Wizards? Yeah, it, it means a lot. Uh, you know, I thought the workout I had with them went really well. Uh, and like I said before, I've had some fans that have lived out there. But most importantly, I'm just glad my family was able to be there and celebrate the, uh, um, the moment with me. Uh, and just a quick follow-up. I know when you came in for your workout, you said, you know, how excited you were to talk to Wes Unseld and how you would be excited to play with Bradley Beal. So now that the moment's here, how excited are you to just kind of get out here and get right to work with them? Yeah, I'm really excited to get to work. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this night to celebrate this moment with my family. But, um, you know, as soon as it hits midnight, uh, I'm ready to get to work. Thank you again. Thank you. Josh. Johnny, for people who are not familiar with your game, what are some of the things you bring to the table? Uh, definitely a two-way player, especially on the defensive end. But on top of that, I think I'm very capable of scoring at all three levels. Thank you. DA? Johnny, welcome to DC, my man. Um, wanted to ask you what it was like, what was it like to be at the, at the top of the opposing scouting report? And what did you notice was different when it was obvious that teams were gearing to, to have to stop you first this past season? Um, being at the top of somebody's scouting report, I take that as a sign that I'm doing something right. But, um, you know, with that comes a lot more attention being drawn to me. So, um, you know, if that, if that happens in the league ever, I think I'll look to be making plays for my teammates more. And what was, it, what was that like this season at Wisconsin when, when you went on this great tear and, and obviously we're carrying, we'll help the focal point to carrying that team. What was, what changed as the season went on in terms of how people were guarding you? Oh uh, yeah, they, they, you know, make sure, made sure to have help defense guys in the gaps just in case I blew by the primary defender. But um, you know, the, that, that's basically just how it was. Uh, I had, I had some really good teammates, but um, you know, obviously none of them were, for NBA caliber players as of right now or this past year. So um, it was a little difficult to be able to, you know, get get those guys the ball in certain situations because I had to know my personnel. Christos. Hey, Johnny, first of all, congratulations. Thank Welcome you. to DC. Uh, my question to you is, this team has the the main goal about next season to, to be back to the playoff, to be back to the playoffs. What kind of... Uh, Motivation for you is to bring your best uh, basketball night in and night out. You said what motivates me? Yes. Uh, yeah, just the, I mean, the aspect of being able to go into a game and knowing that a team isn't just going to, you know, uh, lay on the floor and give us the game and we walk away with a W, you know, it's got to be, it's got to be hard earned and hard fought. And what would, what aspect you would like to develop for your, in your rookie season? Everything. Uh, you know, I feel like I'm nowhere near the maximum potential that I think I could have right now. So I'm just going to come in and, you know, work as hard and as much as I possibly can. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Abby? I can't hear her. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. So sorry. Johnny, you're the first Badger to be drafted since 2015 and the first player from lacrosse since 1947. How special it is, is it for the state of Wisconsin for you to be picked number 10? And how did your Wisconsin roots get you here today? It's very special, you know, being able to represent uh, my home state in a place where I've come from. Um, but, you know, I'm really hoping that everybody in Wisconsin is, you know, very proud of me right now. Josh? Johnny, what, uh, what changed for you between your freshman and sophomore seasons that helps explain your growth on the court? Yeah, I think 
uh, between freshman and sophomore season, I was given more of an opportunity to play how I play uh, in my game my sophomore year. Uh, playing behind seven to eight seniors as a freshman, you know, isn't exactly an easy thing to do. But once I got the opportunity, I took advantage of it. I think it was Wes Unsell Jr. who just a few minutes ago mentioned your backyard court. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just got can you court court. yeah. Can you describe what it was like, what that court is like, and really the games, the competitiveness that transpired there? Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's really great. It's just a place I'll be able to come home and, you know, uh, be able to just get away from everything else and just, you know, do what I love doing. Yeah, do you have another? All right, uh, we'll finish up with Matt. Hey, Johnny, your fellow Badger, Sam Decker, said he liked the fit. Uh, thought this would be a good place for you. Is he somebody you'll reach out to for any pointers or tips about the city? Uh, definitely. If, if I need to, I'll make sure to, you know, hit him up. Uh, you know, like I said, there's not many people that come from Wisconsin and, you know, come into this league. So, uh, him and Frank are definitely some guys I, I looked up to and definitely are some guys I'll reach out for advice. Who took a stash guy at 54? Uh, you know, Joseph, he's got potential down the road. But I think we have some really exciting Exhibit 10 opportunities we're working through right now for summer league toward the future. And I, I really believe strongly that GoGo is going to be one of those areas we're going to gain a lot of marginal gains, which we're looking forward to be able to produce a place that Everybody knows when you get part of the Capital City Go-Go, you're on track to be with the Wizards. You're on track to make the NBA. We've had some success stories, but I think that's really a big area we're going to double down in. So uh, I'm looking forward to our mini camp this, this weekend. So those players will be with us in summer league. But you see more and more chances to look at people. I'm excited about from Devin Dotson to Chris Dunn to Taj McCall, guys that I think are on the fringe of making uh, a roster to guys that we're looking at to, to reward a Capital City Go Go. But 54 is somebody that won't be in a, in a uniform next year for the Washington Wizards. So I suggest you put in for a trip to Malaga and you really want to do it up close and personal. That's where he'll be. So in the Spanish League, it's a great league. Um, Tommy, will Corey play some of this year? No, Corey's going to come out. He'll spend some time with us, but we really, we're going to really focus on Isaiah this summer. And Corey showed us what he could do. And he's working really, really hard on adding to his game. He's actually going to be in Tucson. We, Rui went out to Tucson to catch up with some old friends. And Corey's out. He trains in Phoenix in the summer. So those guys get together. We'll see him here when we get to Vegas. Uh, but no, Corey won't play. How long has Yannick been on the radar? It sounds like he's a guy who kind of was more highly regarded and then had some injury problems. In yeah, last year. and I think that's fine for yeah. where, where he's taken and his age gives us a lot of time. To, you know, he's got some years that's owed. His buyout's manageable, but I, I don't mind letting him matriculate. And, and we've had some good experiences in the past with letting some players matriculate in Spain. And draft rights are always still a valuable thing. So I think we just take a step forward. You know, every, everything we do is try to keep moving forward and building. Sometimes you build with the 10th pick in the draft. Sometimes you build with draft rights. And exhibit 10s are a real big thing. That's what we've been working on. What do you like about Yannick's game? Oh, man, he's got a 7 4 arm span. We think he's, he's a little bit thin bone, but he's agile. He can get around, but he, he's not afraid. He's a very shot blocker. But he's raw. You know, I like that he's raw. There's a lot of habits that he doesn't have, good or bad, so we can build him up. But I love where he's at. I think it's going to be a great place for him to continue to, to grow. We're going to work with that team and make sure there's uh, good symmetry between us. And uh, we'll see how it goes. But that's down the road. It's a good pick at 54 for us. Did the, idea, so did the idea of picking a, a stash player um, interest you this year in particular? Or was it more about the player? Because you, you haven't done that yet since you, you took over. You, you picked yeah. college guys. That I think right at 54, you know, you, you got to be careful. We're, we're, we have some guys we think coming from the go go that they can make our roster possibly. They could get qualified for that two way. We have Jordan Shackle with the two way. There's an open two way. Those, those are the guys that, you know, if we do this right, I think you feed them up through the go go and forward. At 54, knowing that it's a good stash prospect for us, a big that's 
him running shot blocker down the road. I think it's good value. You keep him overseas, not have a chance to hit our roster this year because he's already under contract anyway overseas. He's not ready to help the Wizards. He's probably going to do pretty well where he's at. So it just keeps an open roster spot, but gives you a, an asset for the future with its contract or draft rights for sure. But for as the player, let's see where it goes. It's like buying a raffle ticket. Yes, sir. Uh, your first two second round picks that, that you drafted were a little older and maybe more seasoned. The two most recent ones have been maybe a little more raw or, or projecty. Is that a change in philosophy or just kind of how the board played out? I think it's a little bit how the board played out, but I think in the second round, those are places that, again, we spend an inordinate amount of time going over every scenario, the things that we can do, who do we like, where's the draft cut off, who has good value, who's high high reward with low risk kind of things. And I, and I think he probably fit in that category. But every year is different. Every draft is different. You know, and you just kind of have to know you're able to draft who's in that draft, who's available to you. I think there's a couple, couple. you know, how this goes. You got names that are, I don't ever get too excited in the second round when some's at 48 or 49. You just know the next four names are going before yours. It's just how it goes sometimes. So it, it kind of played out the way we thought it would. The idea of stashing somebody is pretty valuable for, like I said, we, I imagine Nico has worked his butt off. He, he deserves a chance this summer and, and throughout uh, the rest of the summer to see if he can do what he's going to do. We've got to reward those things too. You know, other guys, we have uh, Jordan Goodwin, Jordan Shackle, like I mentioned, Craig Swords, some guys that were on the go-go, they'll be in the summer league with us. I think you need to be loyal to your players, give them opportunity to grow. With the way Jordan improved from year one to year two in college, do you think that's that can translate to the NBA, where you know gradually you're, he keeps uh, improving, like in the NBA dramatically, kind of year after year? Or? Shaq or Goody? Uh, no, I'm sorry, uh, Johnny. Johnny did. Oh, John, I think said yeah. Jordan. No. Uh, okay. Oh yeah, no, I think so. Especially the jump he made from one to two. Yeah. You know, that's a, a sign of things to come. Like I said, I, I'm always big. Any international experience you get is a, it's a helpful. I think that really helped him because he didn't really play a lot in the Team USA. And all those guys that came back from that team had great years. I think they all saw each other. They all worked together. They, they got to know each other's game, but they got to know each other's work ethics too. You know, and I, one thing about Johnny, we, just how it ended up, the day that we interviewed Johnny in Chicago, we had also interviewed a couple other guys, one kid from Purdue that he went up head to head against. So. It was fun for him to see Jaden in the hallway and give him a little, give him a little crap. But uh, you know, I'm excited for Johnny and his family. Wonderful people. Uh, played down at Old Dominion, so his father's really familiar with this area. Settled in uh, in Wisconsin after he played in the CBA. But they're a very athletic family, and they made no bones about it. They're excited to be part of this organization. You get one, you get them all. They're, they're all going to be here. So I'm excited about that. Tell me, uh, was the was the air just too thin up in the top five to really make a realistic run at it? Yeah. Someday we'll talk. I mean, hey, we did everything we could. You put yourself in a position and you feel good about it. I think we feel good about the talent that we have on this roster. I, I feel appropriately excited about their value in the league. But more important, I feel great that they're going to be valuable players for us. Mm -hmm. But you find out a couple of times a year about your roster by the number of calls you get and who they call about and stuff. And I know we got players that are popular around the league, so that's exciting. But it's more exciting for me and for us that, that we have these players on our roster and we look forward to growing them. Still got a, a one one little wide open spot at that point guard, but I think we can address that. And I said that all along. So, you know, you don't reach for something that's not there. If you look at where the point guards were taken first round, was available to us. That was a no-brainer. You know, Johnny was right where we had him on the board, and we're excited about that. Tommy, I know you've kind of been in on a mission, but do you have general takeaways from how the, especially the kind of lottery part of the draft played out? Hmm. We, we, I think we had 16 of the 17. Almost, a, I, I think one or two might have been flip flop. So we were pretty. We thought the draft started about where we were at, maybe at eight, nine, but. Uh, it went pretty unremarkable for a while, and then it just, it, it was feeding frenzy. People were going different places, a lot of different trades. We're still trying to figure out a couple of them. 
it's always the teams that did it is what I'm told. They're still trying to <laughs> keep on backing up on a couple of things. But, you know, that's what makes this night so exciting is the promise that, that the future holds. Everybody loves this stuff in June. And you, you realize you get into the training camp, you get into the meat of the season when those guys aren't playing for you. They're in some other country or they're in the G League or something. That's how it should be. You know, young players, they, they got to earn their stripes. But at the top, I think we took a player that's going to be a rotation guy right away and has a chance to make big, big strides quickly. That's your question. I mean, the whole rest of the draft. I think so. I just we're still kind of going again. back and looking. I, I have the problem on the draft. I very rarely see what's going on because you're on the phone the whole time. So I got to go back and double check a couple things. I think there's still some players that are wearing the wrong hat, if that makes sense. There's going to be some <laughs> trades announced. Maybe not tonight. Maybe it's the 6th of July or something. We'll see. Tommy, how did the interview you guys had with Johnny in Chicago influence you guys wanting to bring him in for a solo workout? And what's the benefit of a solo workout? Well, the solo workout is a it's a mutual agreement between us and the agent. That's what they to get him to come here. You know, for me, the workouts should only validate what you already know about the guy. They usually shouldn't hurt him. But we like to bring him in for medical testing, and we do some grit tests, and we. We don't spare him. If you're going to go by yourself, it's actually harder. But uh, he was a good sport about it. You know, we purposely, and we told him, <laughs> we're going to go harder on you than anybody else that comes in. Because you want to come in by yourself. We said that same thing with Mark Williams. And they, they showed uh, they were very, very good workouts. The interview was wonderful. Kind of confirmed what we already knew. So we got a lot of coaches in, the, in, the, in that conference that we know super well. I think Jawan Howard couldn't have been more complimentary. About Johnny, there's, there's a lot of coaches that went out of the way to say hey, this guy, you know, he's player of the year in that conference. They had a lot of good players in that conference. It's, it's a, it's a good place. So, I, I believe for us, anyway. Maybe I misheard earlier, but did you say Chris Dunn was joining the, the summer league team, or? Uh, he's he's coming to our. We have a mini camp this week. Oh. It might be this week. Awesome. Yeah. Just gonna take us some, to some guys. We haven't put out the roster because we don't know yeah. who all is committed. We have some exciting players that we're really thinking could get uh, get a shot in camp. Kid Todd McCall, uh, I, I think he's pretty exciting for us as a defensive guy. We'll see. What else? Was good back there? I salute everybody for being here. You are hardcore. I appreciate it. How close did you guys come tonight to trading for a veteran point guard? It wasn't there. I, I think the better trade. It, I think a lot of times you force something on draft night, you're taking away the opportunity in free agency and everything that free agency represents. Now people know, okay, this is who we drafted. Now you got to fill out the rest of your roster. It's an interesting free agency because there's not a ton of money in the system. There's not a lot of top, top tier free agents. There's still some people that have to make decisions on their options, obviously. But I think the point guard all along I felt is going to come after the draft, not during the draft. Is it still the plan for you guys to meet with Brad first thing oh, in the auditorium? Yeah. Absolutely. I look forward to it. He's been an active participant in everything we've done. It's, I'm excited about his hand, where it's at. I keep saying it all over and over again. He's one of the fastest healers I've ever seen. Have you had a chance to talk to Brad after the Johnny Davis pick and pick his brain about it? You just text back and forth. The, the problem is, you get on the phone, you're going to be on the phone for a long time. There's other stuff. It's business. We catch up. We knew where, kind of where we were at, what our goals were. We keep moving. With Rui liking the mid, mid range name, Johnny, they saw the back in college, Brad could do. Is that, I know you've talked about wanting to shoot more threes, but what do you think of that? aspect of your guys' offense, is that like a... I think it's going to be a big focus. I, again, it took Rui a while to figure it out, but he's proficient with three of them. We don't think it's going to be a problem with Johnny. It's just you got to get used to that shot. And you got to, you know, once you're used to that shot, you got to realize how quick you got to get it off. So you got to increase his release. It's not just being able to be comfortable with the distance. You got to be comfortable with that release. And he's going to work on that. It's the least of our concerns with him. You just got to get him. Get them uh, ready for what's what's ahead. Hey, Tommy, I remember you said you had about five guys. You saw you back at that 10 spot. Mm -hmm. You can just walk me through that process of 
when you knew he was coming to you? How did that? How was that? You never know until they tell Adam says whoever went nine because mm -hmm. especially tonight there was I think people were you know you go back to where six was five mm -hmm. you know five was a bit of a surprise right everybody right. kind of had that spot of going somewhere else so this one for sure we didn't know until after mm -hmm. Adam said I, I couldn't have predicted Mark would be there or not or Johnny my father's Mark I don't think Johnny it, we felt he would be. Maybe eight, nine, ten. So that's why I was comfortable with five players. Um, but I, I don't think we had a. There wasn't a shadow like, oh, he's not going to be there because someone took him in the top four. Not that at all. So it just kind of comes down to what people were looking to do. And if you look at who, you know, where Sharp went, mm -hmm. where Daniels went, was roughly kind of where I, I think the where Murray went was probably the only one that kind of okay. Yeah, it does. And then also, uh, ask Coach about his intangibles. Johnny, you said character, passion, he had an edge. What were some of those intangibles that stuck out? He was so on my adjectives. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one that told Wes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is that, though. His character is amazing, but it, he's got an edge to him. He wants to compete at everything he does. I think that's what this, we, we're trying to create an atmosphere. It's all about competition, camaraderie. But I'm really serious. We talk about aggression. You know, I think that's got to be something that's very obvious in the way that you go about your business, mm -hmm. being relentless, very much so, being assertive. It's how you're going to earn your minutes here, and we're going to be accountable. Every, every action that you do, it's going to be up. We want to post shooting scores. We want to post turnovers, breaking, you know, all kinds of things that just remind players, hey, you know, you eat what you kill. You're going to play the big minutes you got to earn. Did you go five for five on your list? What's that? Did you go five for five on the list? Not the good order, but it was about that. Yeah, yeah, but that was a fun night, fun draft. This is one thing that's really the NBA is in great hands. These are great, great kids. You know, having Mark Williams come in and get sit down with his sister that was really special. He's a special person. And I want to keep picking names because well, I'll lose somebody. But everybody that we interviewed, I was really impressed with the, the big, less red flags than ever. You know, that's just that says a lot about people that care about these kids and it says a lot about hopefully what the NBA is. Like I said, they're in good hands. Thanks, Tommy. Absolutely. Yeah.